Crypto G. Like that's the main highlight mode factor of this. They are going to have to step up big time here on the CT side if they want to try and survive in this series. Phase to win, Dust 2, eliminate OG and move forward in the lower bracket. It's pissed around to get things started. Rain has taken some early damage out to that mid face. And Suicide Man 2 is going to tag him. There's mid control across the board here for the face camp. Yeah, they're just trying to see if they can bait Mantu. It's a bit of an aggressive peek and Flash coming in over the top. FaZe looked like they had the opportunity of just continuing to press forward and hunt for those kills out towards CT, but instead now starting to regroup. A lot of utility feel still for them to work with. They could try and fake some smokes out towards a B site, commit to this short take, and there's at least one smoke going down towards CT, trying to draw the rotations away from OG because they're leaning in towards A. Yeah, on to that short control, minute to the clock. One player dropping in. Carrigan is going to get dealt with. First blood drawn by Alexi B. Will they continue to find these frags? Well, they're putting nades on position and doing serious damage to this T side line. The Cold Zero, 100 HP for him on the short control, counting, countering onto several players here. And him and Rain get those two frags on Alexi and Mantu. Tipping the man of advantage back to the favor of the face side. Oh! More taps from Rain. Ooh! That was perfectly placed. And suddenly, Falde alone. Gets one trade on a large P cold zero, but so much more to do. He's also taking heads. Kit on him, no Kevlar got to land the next two heads drops back on the next couple of players. Smokes down, they hear the utility being placed up, and they just swing to take him back for phase to kick things off in the pistol. But Rain to highlight himself. Three beautiful headshots on the short defense. Yeah, he may have had a bit of a struggle, Jay, on that first map of Mirage. Not a player that we spoke much about. Uh, only getting seven kills on that first map of the series, but starting things off beautifully on Dust 2. A man advantage coming through from OG. The pressure coming through. The taps from Rain. Oh, FaZe looking as good as ever. A couple of force buys coming through in terms of scouts from OG, backed up by just Eagles. A lot of rifles coming through. Look at the amount of AKs and uh, Galils we're seeing. No SMGs, no MAC-10s or MP7s coming out for the phase camp. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal from Ray. Those, those, those shots look so beautiful. And scouts in for MBK and Mantu attempting their own headshots. Unfortunately, not quite successful with early tags going neither way so far. While they will try press forward towards the longhouse and does isolate one player in twists on the car position, knowing that he's there. But again, similar story to the first couple of faces. Nothing going to go to either side. No tags, no frags. Map control will be gained by FaZe, knowing the Volde is lurking somewhere around this entrance position. Checking out the corners just in case. And uh, well, when they enter, they're just going to have to get one good headshot on a deagle. A bit of crossfire being set. Bait and switch set up, but it's the opening kill going the way of Rain. Valde falling. Matsu now bringing his pressure back over towards the A site. Karakin getting another pick. Issa trying to play on the edge of this smoke. Karakin expecting it. A lot of uh, conversion elements coming through for this T side as they start to make their way already up through ramp. OG just getting picked apart on this force buy. Issa still the unknown entity from the A site, but all of his teammates have fallen. Hardly any damage has been done. What an anti eco from FaZe. When you think about that being a complete force buy with OG. And a gamble stack towards the A site. They don't get away with a single kill. A beautiful round again from FaZe. Anti force buying. I go into anti eco. And all five alive, as you mentioned, for the T side camp. OG. Promising starts in the pistol since then have found nothing. Only three kills in the early three rounds now. USP's out. PT50's on Valde and Mantis. Seeing if they can do any damage with these uh, upgrades. But shouldn't be a round winning setup for the CT side. Placed into the mid control for Alexi. Uh, mid doors position. Two more players will back him up from the CT mid control. The HE's on short. We'll tag Mantu and Valde low. Alexi B forced away. Throw the mollies in to try drive to the positions just to allow map control to come in from phase. And with the lack of Kevlar, it's going to be easy for them to fall back here for the OG side. No flag to support the entry coming through. Actually, Carrigan does get one in from Cold Zero. Two kills found the same. Five versus three. And phase storming into the A bomb site. Not much they can do to counteract it. Even MBK gets taken back from the short entrance. And two standing for the CT side. Yeah, just a bit of a throwaway round from OG. Uh, no buy investment really coming through, so the FaZe Clan don't have too much difficulty being able to just completely overwhelm. So they get the 3-0 start, and now see the rifles coming forward. Nice flash coming through to that short position to just uh, keep the CTs completely blind to that initial challenge. AWP Glass Cannon actually being upgraded here for himself for Mantu. And try and see if he can get off to the right start for his side. Whereas for Brokey, doesn't want to go for the AWP just yet. He's going to hold on to the scout at least for another round. Fire down the mid position. Flashes and smokes up. Flashes over from twists as well. 
that mid position where the smokes go down to the CT side. Mansu, glass cannon all up on the short position, will be ready to waiting to receive anybody from phase that wants to press up to this angle, but not quite as definitive when it comes to the map control. They've just got that mid position on two players and three more slowly making their way in to the upper tunnels. They were spread out to also maintain some long control, but baiting utility away from the CT camp as they uh, to enter towards the B side. And Molotov coming in early. MBK can just go back to the bat lines and it won't force them away here. It landed a bit short. Yeah, Faye is just putting down a little bit of utility towards this upper tunnel split. It does look as if it's going to be a play out towards B side. Lexi be taking a lot of damage early on. Needs to fall back behind that smoke, but it's going to be the Molly 2. And now even the opening connection coming through to the back flat player of MBK. It's a struggling out from Car and an instant save in for OG. It does not get much easier than that from FaZe. Not only did they do a lot of damage onto the rotator player from CT, but they crack open the bomb side, dealing with the two anchors incredibly quickly from Twist. Yeah, FaZe is going to look for that fourth. Another very nice early start from them. The rifles just picked apart so easily. Even with some missed utility, you know, MBK still couldn't hold the position. Ended up going down so easily there. And now Volde, HE in. Might be able to take Rocky down at least. Oh, one HP stays alive. And Cold Zero can clean up that exit frag. Two standing for the OG side, and they need to hold these weapons in because they've got no money going into the next round. Max loss bonus will be in effect, but it won't be enough to get the rifles back in. Mantu could isolate a kill back on. I believe that's rain there towards the CT cross. Just shoulder baiting in, sees that all part. And a 4 0 start for phase. OG unable to get things rolling. Still on three kills total for the CT side. And it just goes to show the confidence that phase are having here, you know? Like, e e even when they miss utility, even when they start to lose HP on players, like, it's the same thing you mentioned in the pregame. Capitalizing on those opportunities, making them work to their favor. They've been unable to do so so far. And as well, very similar image of how the momentum swung over to FaZe's side to start off Mirage. They had a 6-0 start, went up 7-1. to uh, OG going in for a bit of an aggressive play into the lower tunnels for Alexi B onto Cold Zero. But another kill goes the way of the T side. The M4 drops really early on. Cold Zero just falls back. May have heard at least a few of those footsteps retreating back towards the B side. But for OG, you had to rely mainly on the AWP and the M4 going into round 5. And... Well, so far, that M4's already been deleted. OG gonna have to go back into the lower tunnels to try and pick that up. Orp 2, Deagles, 5-7. That's the setup that remains for OG. Again, with that rifle, Alexi falling. M4 in for Cold Zero. Gets Issa next. Back to that mid position as he tries to siphon them off from that rifle. We'll see one player involved again and back down there. Does pick it up in the end, so it could be a bit more of a concern for losing a playback on the face side. But and then again, any exit frag will be fine because this can be a bonus round. Even if those two M4s fall on a Cold Zero and Carrigan, they're just going to upgrade into the AKs. So much cash in the bank for FaZe and Cold is picking them apart. MBK next to go. Valde and Mansu left to hold their exit frag positions because pushing forward will be suicidal at this stage. Yeah, trying hard for so much money for the T side. Valde struggling again. We're seeing some really sloppy sprays coming out for the CT side. We saw it on the first map. We're seeing it again now on the second. They've already seen that Orpa. They're trying to bait him out with the Jiggle Peaks. They're hunting him down towards the side. No one going down wow. from phase. The AWP gets recovered. They don't even need to buy that in for their uh, main star of Brokey. They can chuck that over. Phase Clan looking as dominant as ever. And OG have to take a tactical because... Things are really not working out well for them to start off Dust 2. No, they're not. And very similar to the way they took their early tactical in the first map of Mirage as well. They might have to consider taking a few more over the course of the uh, matchup. Because this phase look locked on. And now it's now it's even it's even more of a case that phase are looking good. Because again, they, they've conceded no frags since the pistol. You know, like that's basically just been such confidence put up by the face clan side no exits no trades no nothing for the og camp double up setup will get brought down by mantu and it's if they can do something with it we had the double up setup once over on the ct side of the uh, first map and that was shut down so quickly by phase it wasn't even worth it mid position for one player again the spread out defaults coming through but three players down here towards the tunnels phase only focusing on the B site in the early rounds. Yeah, you've got a thing for OG. This has got to be the change up. They've already taken a little bit of long control very early on. They've brought Alexi B back over towards the A site now. And just lean Valde in towards that pit position. And FaZe Clan 
and putting at least a little bit of utility up towards that short position. That's going to flash Mantu off angle. Still gets somewhat aggressive. Molly's going to force him back and he starts to reposition. Thanks for backing up with the M4 and Cindy is down. Damage has been done early to the phase camp as they've uh, suppressed by the uh, utility put up here by the OG side. Minute to the clock. Arnold Tolls in as the AWP repositions itself in the short position. At least FaZe have been able to isolate some sort of map control back against OG. They're not leaning up to the short presence. They want to go towards the B side. And they might catch off MBK getting somewhat aggressive towards the upper tunnels. Great re-smoke. Slows the play down. At least holds back the T side for just a little bit longer. I say that, they might just try and want to commit straight through. There's two players coming out from the mid play. MBK fast up towards the tunnel's entrance itself. Needs to try and get a little bit of support from the double AWP from Issa. First kill comes in for the CT side. It drops that bomb. Good start coming through from OG. But Issa's got to try and get some info on the players out from window. Gold zero finds a pick. MBK's still alive and still doing damage. On for a 4K. Doesn't quite get it. It's back to a 2v2. Rain extremely low. This is going to be the first advantage that OG can capitalize upon. Or oh, Pabrocki. He had to shine here on this map, was shining bright in the first one. Flashes over. Oh, the perfect angle of one CT player gets taken back. Ooh. Rain with two kills though. Up for it. One drop. Rain should have been traded. 12 HP stays alive. And FaZe defend the sixth round. Oh, gee. That should have been an easy retake. Oh, he's so low. He's so low HP and Rain does it. My goodness, what a hold from him out towards the B side. What a start coming through from MPK, getting three kills out from close to the tunnels in towards a car position, but still OG crumble. 2v3 post blood comes out for the T side and Rain is the one to bring it back. What a clutch to go the way of phase to continue their undefeated streak on this T side. If this keeps up, we could be in for a very quick map. Eagles in, upgrade pistols. Alexi hoping to catch something here at the CT spawn. The crosslock twists and Carrigan do take some damage. MBK turns that scout off for a frag as a result. So there's a kill found, but quickly overwhelming. The B site split in, the kills come through. Two for one trades. A couple of OG players on the mid position, but Carrigan reading where Mantu's at. Volde will take it back. And the three players remaining for the C, uh, for the T side should be able just to get this bomb plant in. They can recover some rifles on the OG side, but that's their best bet, just to hold on to those weapons. Because there's no retake on the table here. No, certainly not. Bring those weapons into the next round. We know that this was just a light eco. You've been able to present yourself with a great opportunity of holding on to a couple of players, but it actually looks like they want to try and maybe look for some exits try and do some damage to this T-side economy, but it's going to be tough, right? I mean, pretty much everyone is 10k plus. Certainly will be going into the next round. So much money here for FaZe Clan. And OG, well, it might be another moment to take another one of those tactical pauses. Just the, like, the little kill counts is, I think, one of the, the most surprising elements here that FaZe have just walked into bomb sites. They've overwhelmed. Brokey's gone down once, Twist has gone down once, Issa's on zero kills, Mantu's on zero kills, Alexi B's on two. It's looking very, very threatening from FaZe right here. Contrast that to no contest at all from OG. Buy-ups are coming through, but they need to get this round here, else FaZe are going to win the half without losing a single one. Finally, Alexi shows up with something. Opens up the round for the CT, uh, CT side as Carrigan also takes damage and the AWP, I believe, towards that mid control. Facing in, leg down, not taken out just yet. It's a start, however, for the OG side. A kill and a tag, a significant tag of that. Yeah, much needed opening start. And we see that uh, they've done a lot of damage. That Carrigan down low from the leg. Rain to fall from the early peak from Alexi B to control the longhouse. FaZe might just be leaning back over towards this B site where they found so much success in the past. A couple of players there, a third one out from CT. Resmo comes in from mid. That's going to slow the push down from Carrigan getting aggressive. Getting closer to a minute left on the clock, and MBK is going back to this back, pl uh, back plat position. Another Resmo down towards the upper tunnels. This is good utility usage coming out from OG. Flashes over, M4 peeking up. Not seeing anything of the T side line. Again, back behind those. Uh... Those mid doors. 
It's a jump face. There's Alexi we watching. M4. Issa backed up here towards the B site. A bit of an aggressive angle alongside MBK. Three players total to defend on this position. Carrigan caught off by Manta. There's an AWP kill in M4. Having cold zeros back turned towards him. Swing right goes down. Twist tagged up. Rookie does get a trade back on MBK. But now it's a four versus two. And these two players got to work real hard. If OG throw this round away, I don't know what to say. Brookie does get a secondary frag. Knows where Alexi's at. Can't land that third kill. So he does go down. And finally, OG will win their first round. Uh, that's that's going to help. That's really going to help the, the the pressure getting taken away. Obviously, it's still going to be up there, right, knowing that they've already lost the first map in the series, but finally getting a round up on the board. It looks a lot more convincing there from OG, and it starts off with just an, an opening kill coming out from Alexi B from long. And from there, we had a really good sort of uh, setup coming through from OG. Three players out towards the B side. No smoke down towards CT. Allows Mantu's eyes to come through from A as well. Phase. Taking this short control incredibly quickly, something we haven't really seen from them in too many of these T-Sun rounds. One IK for the CT side here. That's the full blown buy, of course, by Phase. I mean, they've got plenty of cash because of the seven rounds in a row that they won. Should be able to uh, get a decent response in. An OG of Mantu pressed up forward here towards the longhouse, expecting T side presence. And those bullets put in down range here by the AK, definitely going to give him the inkling. Eventually swings in against Twists as Twists overextends just by a little bit here. Good effort for Mantu, takes that first casualty. And OG again kicked things off well in the round. Oh, a double nades coming down towards that short position too. Look at the damage that comes through with the Karakin. But now the execution comes throughout from short. Three players with the bomb committing and the late lurk out from Long. Alexi B even gets another kill completely blind. Mantu now starting to get involved and it's down to just two players left over on this T side. Roki losing his teammate, only finding one with the NWP. OG now winning a couple in a row. Utility usage was fantastic there from short, but it started off with that AWP finding the first connection. And there we go. Second to the board of OG. The confidence now starting to look good for them. Will it carry forward is the real question of the moment. We saw such sheer confidence from FaZe. It wouldn't surprise me if they were able to bring it back at some point. Fast playing from FaZe though, however, towards the B side. That might be a possibility. AWP was looking on. Nades back from the CTs will try and counter it. The default set in towards the upper tunnels position though. They've gone frequently to this angle and now looking towards lower onto that short position where Volde could be read upon. Nice nade on Rain. Again, a decent start here for OG. A lot of emphasis towards mid here from the city side. Crossfire being set with an anti-fash player of uh, Issa playing with that AWP. Rain smokes down to get up towards that short position. Taking that early nade and even more spam coming through. Look at the damage coming through onto Carrigan. He's now down to just red HP. On top in, Rain sees one tapped first and it's Alexi B with that kill. Four versus three. Damage done to Volde as well. Smokes back up. Smoke on towards the site itself. Twist extending far out. Does get Alexi to fall. No info on Valde though. Carrigan can sit the bomb plant in, but he sneaks his way straight up to the T side. They have no idea of this player. Finally falls out. Twist will catch him. And Issa finally gets that trade together. Three on two, however. Phase regains the man advantage. Carrigan's low can fall to a two versus two. Orpazine. First two from Issa can't land those shots on the Orpa. Finally goes down to the USP. As Issa makes it a 3k and OG make it a third round. A good retake coming through from OG. Face Clan actually had the advantage in that post blood. Twist did a lot of damage, even though the early nades started to come through. He got them that five on four, continued the site presence to find another couple of kills once the post plant came in. A Karakan getting over aggressive on top of the boxes on the site itself and gives back that 2v2. And from there, the AWP from Brokey's just sort of overwhelmed, repositioning out from short. OG now starting to string them together. Three rounds in a row going the way of the CT side, but they still haven't really broken the economy for the T side as of yet. And both teams back up on the buy. Of course, it'll be an effort to break phases and what we stay. Now, oh, and Alexi B lines up two on Carrigan and Rain, trying to enter from the long house. And OG have that position now completely on lock. 
players up to that mid position going to be heard by Issa. Information called out. Mantu is forced back by some tag damage. Flash in. They do not see where Issa is despite that jump face coming through. They fall back for it, however, phase. Looking on towards the B bomb site once again. NBK in his corner. Flashed in to line up three kills. Whoa. And he gets them all. It's easy as that. Line them up. Knock them down like dominoes. OG. Four in a row. Responding to phase's confidence now. Yeah, things are looking good now for OG. They're really starting to find some form. They're starting to play with a lot of confidence. Great flash comes in and just MBK just holds down Mouse 1. Spray transfer is absolutely fantastic. And OG, well, maybe this is the way back in towards the series, Jay. FaZe Clan have almost hit a bit of a hurdle here. Things have slowed down a lot from them after their initial start. Ooh, thought that there may have been a little bit of an overextension there from Issa, but uh, not quite the case. Start to close the gap now. Only three to a tied up scoreline from OG. These last few rounds have really looked like the first time in this series that OG have actually looked competitive against FaZe as well. Encouraging signs all around for this team. Issa and Alexi here towards the mid and short face. Issa will get Carrigan facing in that flash landing a bit too deep, so he's not blinded off by it. Gets that kill. Sees two more in the mid position as well. Smoke and Nade at the ready, but that smoke down immediately. The five on four ensues with no further face, no further aggression from FaZe. Issa. Oh, just trying to play on the edge of this smoke. Rain on the other side of it. Bit of spam coming through, but Rain's already been able to adjust to get up to short. Another man advantage being converted here for OG, and it looks like FaZe now want to start to put a bit of a play towards the A side. Foul day almost gets caught off aggressively, but knows there's a late lurk out from long. A little over 40 seconds, and the short control has been established by FaZe. Have been pressured this position by HEs in the past. Only two in play, only one of which is on the A site itself. Alexi B has got to try and stall for time and get Vold in a position of the rotation. Great nade on Rain, though. The utility placement from OG has started to look good. Rain drops into CT, dealt with by Issa. Twins will get a trade back, but Issa holding his position. Takes his double up now. Brookie and Cold Zero. Last two players standing. Issa getting three kills total and 15 seconds. Cold is trying to catch off this offer in the back of Platt. And still, man, two swings gets his kill. Brookie with a good flick for 10 seconds to find himself. Three more, get that bomb onto the site. We'll make it a double, but no further than that. Issa closing it down with a quadra in the round and a fifth of the reward of OG. And finally, they've been able to really crack this economy, right? Like, FaZe have still got enough to be able to buy up, but it's not going to look that promising. You're not going to have an AWP for Brokey. You're not going to have a lot of utility if you force in the AK, so there might be a couple of players on Galils if they want to buy going into round 13. But after five rounds in a row go the way of OG, then we're going to see a tactical timeout. I just sort of going over some things because I suppose for FaZe, like they look so dominant for so long on this map and and now the momentum's starting to shift the other way. Now we're seeing players really get involved here for OG. A nice quadra coming through from Issa out towards the B site and from mid. A half by coming through from FaZe. Not going to be forcing the issue. Just going to be upgrading some pistols, getting a lot of Kevlar out and a fair bit of utils as well. All pin on Mantu, hoping to catch something in the mid control. Oh, heads ducked down. And no one seen from FaZe. No Orpa is up there to uh, catch anything off. Obviously, there's no main rifles in play. It's the Mac 10 of Rain being the best weapon they have. Deagles, Tech 9. Definitive hit may be good towards the B side if they just want to smoke it off. I mean, there's no rotations that can come in. It's a 3 1 1 split. Majority presence still a long play, so it's going to left on MBK basically bottleneck them in try to take them down but FaZe still playing at the default here they're hoping to isolate an opening pick oh, this could be the perfect opportunity to charge into B uh, we've actually seen some really heavy stacks coming through from OG towards this B side now there's only that single player of MPK that can bring Issa on a bit of a rotation out from mid giving away his position towards a back plat position Issa needs to go over and try and help him out Flash is turned away from NBK, evading all the blindness, but still goes down to Carrigan. Issa with a trade back. No input that the side players are already on the side itself, so he can get flanked out by Rain, and indeed he does. Alexi B also in window, domed back by Brookie, and now it's a three versus two phase. Firepower disadvantage, but still overwhelming the B bomb site. I talked about a quick play work, and that's exactly what's happened here. Three on two retake set, OG. Taking their sweet time with this one. I'm not even sure the Orp wants to even go for this. Yeah, it might be best just to hold on to it. 
Uh, OG struggling to really hold off towards that B site. It seemed like for a moment that Essa was going to start to get a little bit involved in terms of just trying to help out MBK the best that he can. And Swiss even dealing with the AWP, meaning the Valde is going to be the last one left just outside of the B doors. Gets that first and that second, so it certainly does disallow the amount of weapons that can come through. Not quite the 3k, so that AWP is going to be safe forward for Twist. So much money, though, for both teams, really, that going into round 14 is not going to make the biggest differences in the world. The FaZe Clan, though, maybe all they needed was that one tactical pause. Worked well so far. T side half in the end, trying to make it a 10 5 if possible, which they probably be good for this next round. However, FaZe will have to think about their money state going forward after it, though. If they get reset now, then round 15, maybe another force back. Looking hoping to catch something with the AWP up here through the smokes. Flicks not connecting. No CT player can be seen or read upon. Down to the defaults once again. Much more passive from FaZe. We've seen a lot of presence up to that uh, tunnels position over on the B half of the map. This time it's more mid and outside the uh, long position. Despite that, it's Cold Zero that still gets the opening kill on that uh, 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 B-Tunnels area. B-Site player of Issa set the fall first. Yeah, straight through smoke. Straight spam coming through from the T-Side and they get a little bit lucky with that. And Cold Zero does get dinked down in the process though. 11 HP and now Alexi B is actually going to start to rotate over to try and at least bring two players out towards that B-Site. The FaZe Clan though. We've still got plenty of options here. They've got a lurk from Cold Zero, obviously, in the upper tunnels. They've got rain outside of Longhouse. They've got three players in towards a short position. They can try and fake out towards A, split in towards a B split. Or maybe just try and commit off the fake B from Cold Zero. Warp kill on Mantu lands that first frag on the A side. Defense peeks back in with a second oh! and flicks to the third. That's good. Valde dropping rain, leaving cold left alone. One on four for him, bomb in full CT control. And that is the fear that I had coming into this one. Reset on Fates Clan's economy, especially with Cold thinking of saving the AK. He's going to have no money to work with. Yeah, look, money's not going to be that harsh though, right? Because the loss bonus is so high here for the phase side. Yeah, they don't get the bomb plant to get that extra little Over bit of money, but even with the AK off, being saved in from Cold Zero, Brokey's got enough to be able to get an position. AWP. Karakhan's going to be able to buy himself fine. Rain's going to be able to buy himself fine. Twist may be somewhat awkward. It might have to be on a Galil. But overall, phase is going to have a pretty strong buy going into round 15. The OG, no one really in position to try and go hunting. Straight in without the raid boss, Still gets the kill to a three versus three bomb. Getting closer and closer to a tied up scoreline. The one problem here for OG, or at least the, the situation that they're in, is because we saw such a dominant start in phase that even with OG bringing these rounds as close as possible and trying to bring it back as far as they can, they still won't be able to get a lead going into this uh, second half. And the best that they can do is try and get the seven rounds, and I think it's certainly possible. doing a really good job of just trying to stall, not over peak They get closer half compared to the first half of the first map. And again, the most competitive we've seen OG so far in this series. Faze, despite that though, trying to exit straight out into the long house. Twist is tagged very early in the mid presence, however. Split onto A is on the table. They know that Carrigan there. They must have heard the, the gunshots ringing out. In the traces, perhaps the edge of the smoke. But right now, the main focus for Faze is going to be on that uh, mid to be set up. Trying to draw CT attention away from the actual hit that is coming through. And here they come, Alexi B to fall to Rain. Rain get traded back by Volley, doubling up Cold Zero with a trade back. One player on site, Mansu with the AWP overwhelmed by the AK. Flanked in by Carrigan in the end. It will be a man advantage for Phase here for the retail. And I can't be too struck with the force play. Yeah, Issa and MPK need to try and bring this back. Bomb not yet planted for Phase, but they've certainly got this site completely under their control. Two players out from CT from OG to try and see if they can bring it back. A little bit of utility between them. Kits in play as well. Phase just not overextended. It's all not giving up any kind of peak. Molly even going down, starting to slow it down for this retake. And Faze with three that man, was, uh, that one man advantage, and MPK and Issa have just not had an opportunity at no, all to even take a bit of a contact nice beam. No one swinging out at all from Faze. Finally, Karakin is able to line them up like, and get Faze a ninth sort of round on the T side. Can't go in for a set piece, obviously, with the limited util they have. So maybe just running a default, trying to get the opening pick, work the advantage, and just try and work the rotations is their best bet going into round two. Try and catch off an overextension or two from the CT side. You can see that set up towards mid to expect FaZe to push forward. And uh, you wouldn't be surprised for a team like FaZe Clan to try and go for that kind of aggression. But 
So far, so careful with these famers in play. There's not an M4 in sight for the CT side, so can't be too overzealous, especially if OG ever forced up. I've run this timer very low and taken very little map control for it. They will start to lead towards mid and twist, sees what's going on. Again, information spot out from the connected control scene. Infinity is thin. It goes the way up towards face plan. They get the pistol victory. They get up to double digits. Make it across the line. Zywe wants to pull it across the line. Two frags onto two of the best. And now swings out for another. He's a man possessed. Zywe won for another ace. Another clutch. It's Perfecto hunting him. He's done all of the hard work. He has not died. No one has, has been able to knock him on his ass yet. And now just a 1v1. He's got six HP. It didn't stop him before. And it doesn't stop him again. Zywe, that is illegal. Nobody can touch him. Five to zero. Nine six, the turn of the half phase, leading in similar fashion to the first map. OG, however, looking much more confident going into their T side, but they need to carry that confidence into a map win. They cannot afford to make many missteps at all. Double flash and smokes in for Issa and Lexi B on the pistol setup. Carrigan's got the double flash diffuse over on the T side, and look at how far pushed up these guys want to get here. They want to take the fight straight to the OG side, try to take these players down immediately, but twist is first to fall. Over aggression, going to get points by the OG side. Rocky does see several players but can't find any sort of frag and it'll be a five on four situation for OG in the default. A hyper aggressive start coming through from FaZe trying to get Twist fast up towards that top mid position but doesn't quite pay off with the distractions being pulled away from the lower tunnels and allows the swing out from Issa to be able to find the first pick, get that five on four and from here FaZe are almost playing a retake setup towards the A side. Brokey's going to be the only player here maybe out towards Rap as soon as he starts to hear at least some of this utility and some of the information play from OG. Rookie flashed out as MBK drops down, looks on towards the B door, sees the Carrigan. That defuse kit needs to stay in at some point here. Needs to get picked up in a decent position for the face plant side. Gets that one headshot and that second. Back on for Alexi. Next up the face and next to the fall. The IGL steps up as Brookie falls on the CT side. Cold zero with a backup frag. Leaves MBK alone. And phase clean house. Carrigan becomes the star of the round for the CT side. And that's another yeah, pistol going in the way of the start. Yeah, out. And we saw some up. pretty big moments from Carrigan out on that uh, first uh -huh. half of Mirage, but now starting to come alive absolutely when needed. Great couple of pistol shots coming through onto Mato and Issa even follows up onto Alexi B out from window. Lovely 4K coming through from the in-game leader of FaZe Clan. And for OG, everything was going for them, right? They had the opening kill, they faked their way out towards the A site, ended up splitting into B, but running into Carrigan and running into death. 
running into double digits as well for the face clan side 10 to the board now four to separate these two teams and again og i mentioned they can't afford to make many missteps and that's a particularly big one A short control, Brocky with the Fama. Rain also with another Fama. Ooh. Nice nade on. We talked about OGs, HEs, that short control. Well, players can do the exact same thing and they can burst and tap towards heads, clean house on every player they can. Only one Fama will fall. Now the rifle should come through from OG. Yeah, get those rifles through. See if they can gather some of that momentum that they built themselves up towards the sort of late section, I want to say, of that first half. Now, Faye's getting off to another good start, however. We saw them go 7-0 and o to start off the first half. Now being able to get that 2-0 start. How much further can they bring it forward, though? There's still a bit of a bonus round, keeping that SMG up for Twist. Now, AK is coming through. Nothing real aggressive outside of this initial short take, though, from OG. Smoke goes down to allow a couple of players to swing out immediately from MPK and Alexi P. And that's going to bring Brokey's attention over. Bonus round for the phase side, obviously. No need to invest into the rifles as of right now. And if they can get the victory above OG, that means massive value gained out of these SMGs and FAMASs. OG playing a pretty slow and quiet sort of default set. Rain and cold. It's crossfire. Locked out to that mid position, waiting for the T side players to act. They're going to flash in and start to get aggressive in fact sick and tired of waiting for og to make a move and yeah, they don't get too much information of it though og just being backed off behind the doors but now the slow walk's coming through they smoke off towards ct that's going to force rain away and cold zero might even want to try and peek straight back in seeing a lot of players out from that t side but the split to bees coming through cold zero fights a couple rain getting involved a little bit as well but it's an advantage up for the t side they've taken a lot of damage on a couple of players but they've opened up the b bomb site a good trades from OG now flash in to allow Brookie to enter twists. Can he find one of the rifles that was dropped on the CT players here that might aid them in the retake? Yeah, he does catch off an AK. So 3v2, OG have one player backed up towards the tunnels to try and catch them off guard. So these other two players can focus on the B entryways and twists. Backing up position, checking out the scaffolding, expecting an advanced angle from OG, but they've taken a lot of time to get this retake set up. And with a player exiting from mid, looks like they'd rather save their weapons. Good, good. Rifle from OG. They lose that pistol in conversion, but back in it with the AKs. And again, great trading potential right there on that B-side play. And to capitalize on that trading potential is something that we've been looking for for OG basically throughout the entire series. Mentioned it as one of the key win conditions for Dust2. And, uh, well, that is an encouraging sign again. Especially on the opening gun rounds, right? That starts to put the momentum straight back in favor of the T-side now. The phase. They've got the opportunity of buying around these two saved-in weapons. I think that's what they're going to do. So weapons being dropped by, well, possibly at least for Twist to drop over an M4 to his teammate. And try and see if they can just buy around these two saved in rifles. Four rounds the difference here for OG to try and type the scoreline. AK is coming through. No AWP just yet for the T side, but I'm sure we'll see it soon enough. A fast play came out from OG towards short in the last round. And it seems like that's what they're going to try and do again. Heavy short presence with everything except the bomb there. Hang out towards the outside of Longhouse, expecting FaZe to start pushing forward. Those nades again landing close. Not quite on to do a significant amount of damage to the OG side. Alex is going to get tagged up. That might be about as far as it goes for the moment. Very quiet. Again, very carefully placed on these OG defaults. But looks like Short's going to be their play here. The incendiaries from Brookie will just stall for extra time. Again, another incendiary down. Uh, OG, though, look pretty committed to just going for this short play. And they've got Issa that could be that late lurk out from long if necessary. Only really one player towards this A-bomb side from Brokey. He could put a smoke down out towards Goose, faking there's a player there. Martov not extending towards here on the ramp control, swings and sees two players, lines them up, both takes that one frag. Minimal damage done to Vale, allows Vale to get the trade on three points of health. He stays alive in a four on four, and FaZe 
have range still close here. No one's checked this round position still. Alexi B will go down for it. One more CT out towards long. That late lurk of Issa still yet to set itself up. He was looking to go towards mid and support from short, but has no time to get to position. And Carrigan could end up backstabbing against the teas as a result. They have absolutely no idea of this position, but Issa finally swings up the strike. Take one frag. Not quite the second rain trains it. Valde looking, man, to take one frag. Back still no info on Carrigan. Sprays through Carrigan. It's the one kill in a second. No kit on him. Does a teammate have it dropped close to sight? He's going to need it to get the defuse. He's going to stick the full 10 seconds, actually. I think it will be close, but I think he'll also have it here. Phase. In with their 12th. The IGL again becoming the key entity for the CT defensive as OG are shut down in the rifles. I got very worried there when you see how close that kit is to the site. But look, anyway, it's a great retake coming through from FaZe. And what OG didn't anticipate at all was any kind of retake in for that short position, right? They had Issa out from the late lurk from top mid. And I think without him getting that information that someone was coming up from short from Karakin, they just assumed that it was only going to be the play up from CT. A really great trade start coming through. But both players are looking over towards ramp and not out towards short where Karakin comes in from. Face Clan winning another round on their CT side, and even look at the buy coming through from OG. They've struggled to get this rifle round together. And back 10 in for Alexi. They have got the Galil as well for Issa, so definitely not the most uh, consistent of buys here. I have sat towards the short and CT spawns. Nobody watching long. So this looks to be a retake setup from FaZe, if not just initial defensive on that short uh, angle. Even then, they're pressed so far up towards short. So OG could just walk in and get the bomb plant here. They're going to see those smokes or hear those smokes going down and start realizing what's really going on. That extra smoke onto the site might back them up. No, Rain catches Alexi V. It's probably a small gap there in that smoke on the cross. Well, they has that bomb, however. He can get it planted in the midst of the smoke. Yeah, good start already coming through from FaZe to find that first pick. A little bit of damage coming through from the nade 2 onto Issa. OG finally getting that bomb plan in, and, well, FaZe could just play out the advantage. They've got kits, they've got a little bit of utility in terms of those flashes, and they can slow it right down. It doesn't look like anyone wants to retake in from short, though, or from long, I should say. It seems like the majority of the players are going to come in here from short from FaZe. Time is low. Resmoke down to that cross. Going to try to siphon off some vision for the phase cap. Issa here on ramp. Can't do much. Twist takes him down. Three players, two players standing. They're going to line up for the AK, but only get so far with it. All picking on one and not on the bomb. Can't land that second shot on Cold Zera. And the defuser gets stuck by Twist. No kit, though. Oh, oh, he hasn't got it. He hasn't what? got it. Why was he cold on the bomb? Oh. That's going to cost him. That's, that's mass miscommunication right there. There were so many kids in play there from FaZe, but uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. Cold Zero should have been the first one to get onto that bomb straight away. Oh no, big mishap coming through from FaZe. They might have taken everyone down, Jay, but not getting enough time for that retake together. OG get a gift out of nowhere. Unexpected one of that. And now the buy is broken for the CT side instead. Yes, OG still have two SMGs in play, but CZs and Deagles lacking in head Kevlar for the OG camp. MBK and Lexi B could be up to fuck some serious cash, but the AK of Cold Zero wants to try and change that. Gets only one frag before Alexi finds the trade. Matt 10 strikes to a four versus four, continuing to press out the mid control and going for a very quick B split. Spoke back from Carrigan, Issa reads it, takes him down, opens up the B site for good here, scouts in, hoping to catch Alexi in the mid doors, but for the most part, it's just a case of defending the B bomb site and going for the retake here for face. Trying to see if they can get some of these trades together. Rain held the last one left to try and see if he can clutch out. He's already fired four kills. The round, and he's going to be able to clutch it for FaZe. A massive round coming through from Rain to get the 13th up for FaZe. Oh my goodness. No rifles in play. He picks up the AK and he delivers. What a clutch. What a player coming out for Rain. And he's done it before. He does it again. Another one for him. And he's the guy that's standing up for FaZe right now. Last game was Twists joined by Brookie later on in the second half, but 23 kills here on round 22 for this man. And again, another clutch to that B site. We saw him do it earlier on when he was pressured by OG so heavily. And, and in this round, such a big one to win because of phase, that's number 13. Closer and closer to the 2-0 for this star squad. Rain in with that kill. Another one to add to his tally. Man 2-4 in the lower tunnels. And OG... 
well, where do they go from here? Yeah, look, already information coming through. Rain getting very hungry now and looking just on top form on the CT side. And just in general, we saw that 1v3 clutch in the post plant in the first half and now another clutch coming through in round 21. Sets phase clad up for victory road, right? OG are on the force by here. They've already lost the opening pick. A lot of players are sort of at least siphoned in towards this mid presence from the CTs. Double playing towards short. OG maybe looking to try and see if they can get a split into B. OG backed up Tech Nines and Eagles. Issa will be next to fall to the hands of Carrigan. One more player falling in tunnels. And OG with such little firepower to work with. Trying to make their way out for mid. Brocky and Carrigan just cleaning house of the SMGs. M4s can finish the job. And that's a 14th now for FaZe. OG are absolutely decimated on economy state. I think that was a force buy in the last round. So two grand at best to buy into round 23. This is going to be map and match point for FaZe at this stage. No matter what the buy is from the T side. It's better to go for Eco, I'd say, to try and grab back to OT. But even that seven rounds away. Like the outlook for this team has been looking dire from the word go and it looks to just get worse yeah harsh eco comes through like you've got no option here you force by and you can pretty much say goodbye to this map maybe if they can get a bomb plant then great they're just going to try and waterfall rush their way through short rain's going to hit all of these footsteps information should get called out they should be able to at least deny this bomb from going down you would expect so at least coming through lots of utility in terms of the nades mbk actually finds that first pick more utility though coming through towards the a side trying to get closer and closer to the site but getting just picked apart man to an mbk the last couple left they've been able to do a fair bit of damage the clock trying to pull down towards CD, <laughs> but not quite happening for OG. It was an attempt, but it doesn't quite work. You can see his idea, though. He was going to, like, drop in, like, Ezio from, from Assassin's Creed, just try to see if he could get the headshot in immediately. <laughs> but no. No, that, 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 that definitely looked a lot better in his head than it actually translated into the server. 15 to 8. And FaZe, uh, they're on map and match point for a 2-0. OG had a lot of promise in his first half of Dust 2, but that promise has since disappeared. Has made their chances here in IEM Katowice. Seven match points for FaZe to work with. OG need a desperate take and a sight stacked into the upper tunnels. One lurker out from mid. Smoke's about to clear. He's got a second smoke he can put down to the CT cross. But it will be the site defenders that will be the main concerns here. OG set to act. Carrigan M4 to line up several. NBK takes his head. Twists now needing to try and back up the site defensive. Man 2 going to get gold zero. Twists forced away. He's taking some damage. Eventually turns it back to a three versus four. But that's not a three versus four that favors the OG side. And FaZe think better of it. Save those weapons into the next round. It's worth it, right? You're already on 15. No point throwing it away and trying to just risk it all to go in for the retake. You win it, yeah, you win the series, but you don't. You put yourself in economical turmoil. You don't have those weapons. You don't have those T-side weapons on the city side. At least this way, if you look for some exit kills, you can maybe limit the economy further from OG, depending on how many more picks go your way. But so much more of just a crucial, smart decision coming out from FaZe to realize, you know what? It's not worth it. A great opening kill comes in from MPK onto Karakin. Rain pushing quite far forward into the upper tunnel, seeing if he can deal with any of the T-side players. Great flash comes in, completely blind. Broke with the AWP, could get swung on a bomb, but no, not quite going to happen. OG doesn't look like they're going to lose any more players. So, they're getting closer to double digits, Jay. And I suppose they are getting closer and closer to tying up the scoreline. But, it's still a long way from sort of thinking about that being a possibility. Well, tack pause for phase. We saw how well they were able to adjust the last time they took the tactical pause and just shut down OG from then on out. And they only just need one good round. So attack pause at this stage, that might be enough to close the series. OG needing six in a row to take us to OT. Give it some credit once we hit about 12, 13 rounds. That's when it really starts to heat up for this team. But right now it's just a case of let me not on a grind back. AK has crossed the entire board, so there's always that encouraging sign. It's technically a better buy than what FaZe have to work with. They've got a Fama in for Carrigan. That AWP is on Brocky, though, so there's no AWP to respond from OG. 
Mantu even taking a passive angle to this mid doors area, expecting some uh, mid control from FaZe actually. They do catch him off guard, takes some early damage. AK in between, what? takes two FaZe. No! Oh my god! They're gonna mop it up in a matter of seconds. This one may finish. Mantu on 13 HP to recover a 1v4. And I can't believe amidst that rush is what's going to close the game for FaZe. Four kills for Twist, 69 2 0 for the All Star Europeans. And they move on in the upper bracket. OG are out of.